Lovely, lovely. Uh, the team from Masaba Masaba, the beautiful Nina Gupta. So nice to connect with you all. Masaba, Neil, thanks so much for your time, guys. I hope all of you Thank are you. good. You're being safe. It's crazy times. Yes. Yes. Yeah, all safe. trying to. All good. Yeah, uh, so far so good. <laughs> Yes. You know, uh, I think it was in about 2019 that I had the privilege of uh, picking Sir Viv Richards' uh, brain. I got to spend some time with him. And I just feel um, now the circle is complete that I'm getting to interact with all of you. Um, we are getting a peek into the house of Masaba and in such an amazing way. Congratulations, guys. Masaba, Masaba is looking amazing. It's looking beautiful. Uh, we are with the original fashion icon, Nina Gupta, of course. Um, my mom was a huge fan. I'm a huge fan. You're constantly reinventing yourself. We love you. I love you so very much. Big fan, big fan. Um, but first up, let me come over to Masaba. Masaba, congratulations on this Netflix special. How did this monster of a project come to be? Uh, thank you. Um, it it was really strange, actually. My uh, the producer of the maybe two and a half, three years back, and she said, you know, I have this really interesting idea that hasn't been done before uh, would you be interested in chatting about it and when she first told me the idea I thought it was a reality show and I said there's no way I'm having a camera follow me around uh, you know that's just a no-go for me so then she said no it's not a reality show it's a scripted series that um, basically borrows instances from your real life and uh, we kind of make it a scripted uh, mockumentary of sorts so I think the best, the part that really got me was that, oh, you know, I get to play and my mom gets to play fictionalized characters of ourselves, versions of ourselves, which I thought was really interesting because it hadn't been done in the country. It was, it was really new for a designer in, in this space and it was a real big challenge for me. So I was just really keen to explore uh, something new and I think it caught me at a time when I was also feeling a bit down and out at work at my design label. So I think it just kind of, the timing was perfect and uh, we said, you know what, let's just start writing. Let's see what becomes of it. We didn't even know if Netflix would commission it, but here we are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's how it happened. Wow. I, I must say it's all come together so very beautifully. Nina, ma'am, um, there are portions of it where, uh, of course, like w when you meet uh, the big stars who are playing themselves as well, um, it's a little peek into your career and the fact that it's fictionalized. You girls are having so much of fun with the whole thing. But uh, talk to me about how you went on to reinvent yourself uh, in your career. Well, I, uh, I got married at a very late age and uh, then I thought I have had enough of work. All my life, I've been working like a donkey. So let me enjoy this married life and not work and get up aram se and go to the parlors, go watch a movie, <laughs> uh, which I could never do uh, when I was working because there was no time. Uh, I had to call the uh, the threading lady to the van and do it. You know, it is that busy. Right. So. Um, but then, so I didn't work for 10 years and then I realized I was also not getting few offers because they th used to think I was living in Delhi after my marriage and I was not mm. interested in work. So I put up that post in my frustration and anger and then, then things started happening and then um, I think Badaiho changed my life, changed my career totally. Uh, if that hadn't happened, I would have done work but not like this. So... But I hope is a major, major, big uh, change uh, in my life. But, but I hope and we are so very happy that we get to see you in action and rocking it like how um, you're so very good and you play every character to the fullest. Um, you're a legend, Nina Gupta. You truly are a legend. Uh, and we see legend the black bolo. lady there as well. Legend ni bolo. <laughs> legend bolne se lagta hai bahut koi purani budhiya. Okay, man. Not calling you a legend, but you know you're a rock star. Neil, let's yeah, talk about better. your character. 
<laughs> you, you seem to be playing this uh, this business tycoon. And what was the brief, initial brief that you received as to this is the character that you're going to be playing in Masaba Masaba? Um, the brief I got before before my had, before my uh, brief was about the world, uh, as Masaba had spoken about, and it's really interesting and intriguing. So not only is one part of the Netflix uh, family, but one's uh, rolling with the Gupta family also. Uh, so that was really nice, and um, and and my brief was uh, that he's he's this, a bit of a, a awkward guy in terms of. Because I'm not playing myself, I'm playing a character called Dheria. So, yeah. uh, and just the name only made me, I was like, wow, Dheria. <laughs> and Sonam Nair he was, found it really funny. So, um, <laughs> she said, you know, you're just there as a support system in terms of, uh, as an investor. Uh, sort of, is this wannabe creative person, but he doesn't get, he only, he only gets the um, economics of it. And Masaba, of course, is is all about the creativity so it was yeah it was a fairly simple brief for me at least uh, but i was very intrigued by the world of uh, of this which is sort of a mockumentary like masaba said that it's always good to be part of new new age work you know i think and and every every maybe three years every four years we have the opportunity of you can notice some new change in rhythm or, or something that the mass media has, it's always alive. That way, I mean, this industry is a safe industry. <laughs> <It'll> always, <laughs> that's, that's it will always, always keep going. Unless you change right. your personal uh, rhythm. Right. Yeah. Uh, Masaba, by the way, um, that red l dress looks amazing on you. And I think oh, every you. single frame, every single time you're on screen, you're collections, the way the dresses have been showcased as well, it's coming across so very beautifully. Um, there's a statement that you make uh, that says, from the day I was born, um, I was born into controversy, right? From the day I was born, right? Um, talk to me about growing up. It must have been different. It must have been crazy for you. Um, you know, the thing is, uh, a lot of people think that it was the foundation, it must have been this, you know, alternate universe, but it really wasn't like that. I just, uh, mm -hmm. I, I just grew up with uh, half a parent, you know what I mean? And I think that, right. I think that uh, in, in, in our country is made to be this, oh my God, there was such a void in her life and there was this and there was that. But, you know, I have to say that uh, sometimes things that are not considered normal really protect you from the abnormal, as they say. You know what I mean? So sometimes not a conventional family work setup or conventional looks really protect you and sort of preserve you for something much better is what I think. Um, and I had a great time growing up because, you know, I was very young when I started to pick up uh, human relationships and you know when you're so young you just as a child you don't understand the complexity of them but I really picked them up at a very young age I used to read the papers really often about you know my parents and what people are saying so I was you know you know like they say I was padded there was padding was done from a very young age to all of these things that society kind of throws at you I I think uh, in terms of normalcy I mean it was like any other household because I really believe nothing is worse for a child to bitter parents trying to make things work for the sake of this child getting a so-called normal upbringing you know so everything was transparent I went to uh, this school that I was you know now but most of the time I was treated as as one of them because I was like this rough rowdy Hindi speaking child so it was all okay you know but uh that's who I am. I'm like this Punjabi girl who who just happens to have this mixed looking, uh, you know, vibe. So people think I'm I'm the outsider or, you know, I'm that foreign import, but I'm really not. So I think I got treated like that. And I just fit in over the years is, is the way I see it, I guess. Right. Somewhere along the line is this, has this series been... Um, the both of you rekindling your relationship, that bond um, between a mother and a daughter uh, that we get to see um, when she comes 
crying back to you by the end of the day neena ma'am uh, what's it been like for you working with your daughter uh actually it was again normal i mean hamara bonding to ho chuka hai bahut pehle उसके लिए मसावा मसावा सीरीज की जरूरत नहीं थी लेकिन शुरू में आई टू थिंक दैट आई शी एंड मी बोथ विल फाइंड इट ऑकवर्ड टू एक्ट बट वंस वी वर ऑन ऑन द सेट इट वाज नॉर्मल आई थिंक इट्स बिकॉज शी इन हर ओन वे एंड मी इन हर माई ओन वे वी बीन वर्किंग वी बीन वर्किंग वुमेन सो आई थिंक वेन इट गेट्स टू वर्क वी change you know it it is nothing new so mm. when we did our first shot together we were fine you know <laughs> yeah so right what about you masaba what's it like working uh, with mom like this in the same frame well apart from the fact that she scolded me on the whole in front of the whole set on day 1 <laughs> she actually there was this one dialogue where i was you know it was my first dialogue and i said you know i'm really going to act this out and that whole pent up you know so i really did a bad job at it and she just said you're doing such a bad job itna bura kar rahi hai she didn't give her dialogue but she said this instead so i just wanted to <laughs> die typical motherly thing to do typical wow. mother you know like kaise kar rahi hai theek se kar rahi hai but she had forgotten that she had to give her lines <laughs> but but apart from that it was great you know it's like she said it was like a job for me um and funnily enough i kind of uh, stepped out of my skin and was viewing this person uh, masaba of course but this person as somebody who have you know known really closely somebody who uh, these things are happening to and i just kind of happened to be familiar with them so i think uh, it was a weird out of body experience but i think naturally that came to me otherwise i would have been very very stiff and a bit tense on screen is what i think so yeah right uh, you definitely tend to get more and more comfortable and even we get comfortable watching you on screen and taking us on this journey it really sucks you in uh, and oh, once you start watching then there's absolutely no turning back you're hooked on until you get it out of your system um and like farah khan said um uh, Nina ma'am uh, is it keto ya ghar ka khana that makes you look so very good but uh, the point i'm making is the celebs the actual celebs popping in all of a sudden just gives it like a very fresh angle um and so far uh, kiara adwani uh, farah khan yeah. who else is um, expected to be on masaba 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 mm, if you think think, uh, 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 I think that that's pretty much it. Except Shivani Dandekar is doing uh, oh, yes. a, a cameo, and uh, Gajraj Rao, of course. How can we forget? Yeah. Uh, he and Mama are doing a, a little thing together, so there's that cameo. But uh, I think that's about it. So yeah, maybe maybe hopefully if we have a season two, we'll probably get uh, the the rest of the friends and family as well. <laughs> <laughs> of course why not uh, ma'am we need to talk about uh, gajraj rao and uh, neena gupta um a lot of people actually think that the both of you are uh, an item <laughs> and that you come as a package <laughs> but um such a beautiful chemistry such beautiful um acting both of you are so very seasoned when it comes to knowing your craft um must be a very very comfortable equation to uh, be acting with each other uh i believe that there is nothing called chemistry i believe mm. if the act other actor is as good and if both of you are good actors the chemistry happens if one It's of you magic. is a bad actor the chemistry doesn't happen <laughs> I believe in that. There is nothing called. Otherwise, I work with anybody. I have chemistry. That uh, yeah. means what? Means that if the other actor and me are both good, and uh, we are listening to each other and speaking our lines by meaning them, then chemistry mm. happens automatically. You don't have to mm. do anything about it. 
and with gajraj ji it was the same thing we had we have ne- had never met in fact he was a busy guy and he never uh, came much for the rehearsals also he came very less for the rehearsals but um, we were so comfortable you know uh, there was nothing it was just your job at least your job basically तो फिर जिसके साथ भी काम करो हाँ हाँ तो मतलब फिर तो जिसके साथ काम करो उसके साथ अफेयर करो उसके साथ शादी करो मतलब ऐसा तो नहीं होता गाइस सिंस द शो इज ऑफ़ टॉकिंग अबाउट द वर्ल्ड ऑफ़ फैशन um which for outsiders can look a little shallow uh, we are going to talk about the world of fashion in just a little bit but uh, growing up i'm sure we all had fashion for pa uh, fashion since that we all have committed neel let's begin with you what what was it uh, was it like a boy band phase that you were going through when you were growing up what what was the ridiculous things that you used to do in the name of fashion Well, Sriram, one one of it was that um, I I remember these orange Bermuda shorts that I had, uh, and uh, I was twelve or thirteen, and uh, it had a uh, pineapple on it and uh, some other fruit on it, and they were really big. So you have to pull it up, like either it crosses your knees uh, or you pull it really really up. and it was really stupid but i loved those uh, those bermuda shorts you know bermudas and yeah I, I, bermudas it's been a while i lived in them for about 4 years fashion idea yes yes <laughs> i lived in them for like 4 years uh possibly still have i can you know, really take a photograph and you need to post it up neel uh, we'd, yeah. we'd love to see that yeah. you mentioned yeah. it um, I, i remember having this face when i used to wear like keto's shoes with socks yeah i don't know why yeah. i don't even know why printed <laughs> t-shirts all of it uh, masaba let's come to you uh, it's going to be tough uh, considering that you set the trend but what have been some fashion disasters for you no no i have committed so many i cannot tell you i you know there was this phase where you got those like uh, you know and it cut you under the bust and then it became like a balloon you know <laughs> like it just became like a balloon balloon and it had a elastic so it became small at the bottom literally like you're wearing a garbage bag you know that was with an elastic at the bottom i've worn so many of those that make you look so bad they're just so unflattering that was one uh the second was that i had this phase where i would um you know when you have really bad inner wear like you as as a woman i think it's so important to have good inner wear because otherwise you know i would see these old photographs at some event or whatever I, that i used to go with mom to and i would have like this pink bra flashing through a white outfit <laughs> i never think that there would be flashes you know or there would be like my tights would suddenly shine and you know with the flash or whatever there was that then there was a phase that i had where i would put blush here like uh-huh. two round golas <laughs> and i wanted to die when i saw it because i had no under eye concealer so i had like dark under eyes and two golas of red So there have been so many. The list is endless, but these were some of the iconic ones. Yeah, we've we've all been through it. Uh, Nina, ma'am, what about you? Uh, you are the original fashion queen, and uh, right from the time of Sans uh, to Kamzor Kadi Khan, like you always looked the part. But tell me, have you also had fashion disasters? Uh, sorry to say, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, because I'll tell you why. Because I never went according to what is चल रहा है, हाँ? हाँ. कि this is the fashion, so I went always according to my body, what looks good right. on my body, and also my mother was very strict. Uh, uh, so. I always used to love uh, wearing pants with a tuck-in shirt. Okay, mm-hmm. but that was not allowed. And uh, when bell bottoms came, I wore bell bottoms for a long time. First, it was like narrow, then it was big flare down. Uh, yeah. But I used to tuck in my shirt in the bell bottoms also. But I was not allowed to. So I used to leave my house for college uh, wearing the shirt over the thing. 
and then the shirt will go inside in the bathroom i will go and th- that used to happen also sometimes i will leave my house with a dupatta over my top you know a chunni right. over my top and the chunni will go in my bag after i leave the house so uh, but i don't remember any disaster because i, I think i was very good <laughs> you were when i take a look at the pictures you, you no matter like even the paps of that time would always find you just wearing the right things all the time and uh, i always felt that um you were way ahead of your times in terms of your fashion sense uh, you just look perfect in all the photos uh, just so so Nina i'll tell you uh, so i was uh, doing my ma and mphil in sanskrit from delhi university so mm. the people in my class sanskrit ma class were bodhi jinki bodhi hoti thi wo type ke log hote the you know not very mm-hmm. fashionable uh, very sanskari mm. type ke log hote the so i used to wear my halter necks and things like that <laughs> so they used to boycott me they never used to talk to me because i was a bad girl <laughs> you know according to them bad girl i was very bad girl so i, I and i had nothing to talk to anybody over there so my adda used to be d school which is delhi school of economics where i used to sit and have my adda and thus come for the classes to the sanskrit class <laughs> well um speaking of wearing what you were comfortable with i love even the little night suits that you're wearing in the series uh, uh the polka dot one with the jean shorts and then you had another printed one um you looked so very comfortable rocking it like how um it's it's got plenty of like undertones of really cool fashion that uh, you need to watch out for in the series well done again masaba um now masaba let's talk about instagram yo you you're like hooked on to instagram and we see that through the posts as well but you're one fashion designer mm-hmm. who's used instagram really really well yeah lila <laughs> Yeah so sure. I thought you're going to give okay. up a 5 minute <laughs> the voice of god it's like yeah. <laughs> big boss big boss <laughs> big boss all right come on no, uh, uh, we'll wrap this up uh, sorry you were you were saying um you know the thing is i you're right i have used it really well uh because you know frankly it was the only tool i ever had you know we never we never as a label had enough marketing money to ever put even a hoarding up or uh, you know put an ad in a magazine or you know to do any conventional sort of marketing so i said you know what i have this following and it's only just now that it's it's blown up the following but it's always been a very conservative number in terms of followers as well so i used to say you know whatever little bit i have i'm going to use that to really put and communicate what the brand is about out there it was just simple you know and uh, i always say we're a brand that that has been built on instagram uh we continue to use it as a really powerful marketing tool because the thing is you control the narrative you know you can say what you like you can say it how you like you can weave stories you can you know on some days when you're feeling like oh i've done a bad collection we'll put it up but i think the the thing is that the key to it is that you have to be honest because you know the audience out there today is so smart that um the minute you put out any dishonest or like over smart communication they will pick up on it so i think we just do that i mean i as a person i just like to be honest when i'm not feeling good looking good or whatever it is and same with the brand you know when we have like a bad collection or we do a bad collaboration or whatever we just share it with the world and uh, that's who we are i think we're a very public brand in that sense and that's how i use instagram so yeah well we are loving the updates keep them coming um final i'm going to give you three names and if you could just tell me uh if uh you would make any wardrobe alterations for these celebs starting with ranveer singh masaba gupta what would you change about his wardrobe not at all not a thing because he wears so many of my clothes <laughs> uh, not a yeah. thing i think you know he is having a lot of fun with uh, his clothes i think he's just having a lot of fun with what he's wearing with color and you know you identify him with energy which i think is great so nothing about ranveer yeah perfect what about virat kohli 
Uh, I really like Virat's style as well. Very classic. Um, in fact, mm. uh, I love his airport looks very much. So nothing. <laughs> nothing about him as well. All right. Finally, uh, Rahul Gandhi. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would make it a little less serious. I think as a young politician, it would be cool to see him kind of. Uh, just relax a bit you know what i mean ab ab, ab itna serious ho ke to kuch mil nahi raha to me as well change it up you know <laughs> yeah. lovely how's yeah. it masaba nina gupta masaba neel guys thank you so much for your time uh, have a great rest of the day and i look forward uh, thank you so much for your time um, pleasure thank, thank you. you thank you so Wonderful much guys. thank you thank you